We need to walk in that revelation of knowing God is up to something and nothing should take us away from his presence. Nothing should take us away from his work. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 18, and I tell you that you are Peter. This is Jesus. He went to his disciples and he was asking them, who do people say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Some say you are Elijah, they say. Some say you are John. But here comes Peter. Hear, hear what Peter said. Peter said, you are Christ, son of the living God. Then Jesus said to him in verse number 16, Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church. And the gates of heads will not overcome it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom, the Bible says. Whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. Therefore, God is building his church. God is building his church. Jesus is the head of the church according to Colossians 1.18. He was teaching the Colossians, Apostle Paul, about the preeminence of Christ. And he said, Christ is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the Bible says. The firstborn from the dead. That is all things that he may have preeminence. Therefore, Jesus now is the head of the church. And is building his church upon the rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Therefore, today I want to encourage you as you come to it. Always know, walk with me please. Always know that Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And he will build his church upon the rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Like I said last Sunday, it is not by might or by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord, according to Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but my Spirit, says the Lord. Therefore, church, the joy is in the journey and not the destination. The joy is in the journey of what God is doing. And that's why I'm encouraging everybody today Let's walk on this journey together. Let's walk on this journey together as a church. Let's stay connected. Let's keep on keeping on and grow in this and continue walking on this journey together. And God is going to bless you. Therefore, last Sunday, I started a message on understanding times and seasons. And I've had so much feedback, so many feedback from people who are watching. It is important, this is so critical and so important in the body of Christ. It is so important for us as individuals to understand the times and seasons. To understand what is God doing in a certain season in your life. Because there are dimensions of grace released in every time and season. These supernatural possibilities, God wants us to experience them. One of the things that the enemy does to you before he attacks you, he studies you to understand and to see whether you understand times and seasons. And if you don't understand times and seasons, what the enemy does, he keeps you busy, engaged with so many activities, but no productiveness. Therefore, this morning, I want to encourage you. Don't pursue things that don't have value. Things that don't bring eternal value to you. Just because everyone is doing it, it doesn't mean you do it. That because everyone is going that direction, it doesn't mean you go that direction. Just because everybody is investing in that industry, it doesn't mean you invest in that industry. It's important for us as Christians, as child of God, to understand what God is doing in a certain time and season in our lives. Last Sunday I shared about Issachar, the sons of Issachar, according to 1 Chronicles 12, 32. The Bible says the sons of Issachar who had understanding of times, therefore what gave them an upper hand, like I said last Sunday, is their understanding of time. They understood the time, and that's why they were in command. They understood what God was doing in a certain time and season. Therefore, whatever is going to give us an upper hand in this season is to understand what is God doing at this season, at this period in your life, what is God doing. Therefore, last Sunday I gave a few definitions according to Greek. There's what we call chronos, definitions of time. Chronos is the chronological, the sequential, quantitative time. Then I say there's kairos moment. The kairos is the defining moment. 
when you get an understanding of the defining moment you catch what God is doing there is beauty when we understand what God is doing understanding what God is doing in a certain time and season brings beauty in your life why? because you are now in sync with God you're not going ahead of God. You're not doing things, then you go back to consult God about them. You're consulting him first before you do anything. Ecclesiastes 3.11, the Bible says, he makes everything beautiful in his time. Give it to me in, the, in, in KJV. The Bible says he had made it, sorry, in, in NKJV, sorry. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Therefore, God has designed and orchestrated our lives. Your life is designed by God. It's orchestrated by God. According to Ephesians 2.10. I've looked through the scriptures in different versions. And this is the best version I came across. Ephesians 2.10, the Bible says, we are his workmanship was. Watch this. His own masterwork. A work of art. Created in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Reborn from above. Spiritually transformed. Renewed. Ready to be used. For good works. For good works which God prepared. Prepared for us beforehand. Therefore there is good works. There is a plan. There is a design. There is an orchestration God has done. For our lives church. And we need to tap into this. Because when you continue reading the Bible says. So that we would walk in them. Living the good life which he did watch church. He prearranged and made it ready for us. That is your, that is your portion in Jesus name. One of the reasons, honey, why people get anxiety, one of the reasons why people walk in fear is because they don't understand what's happening. They don't understand what God is doing. They don't know what, what the outcome is going to be. And I'm sorry to say, some people are always worried and thinking about the worst case scenario. They're thinking about the worst case scenario. Why? Because they don't know what God is doing. Their spiritual eyes are closed and they are short. They don't know what God is doing in a certain time and period. And I say last Sunday, I'm going to repeat saying this. Spiritual illumination is very important in this time and season. Spiritual illumination to be able to decode and to understand what God is doing in a certain time and season. Because without knowing that, you walk in fear. You walk in anxiety. You walk in the unknown thinking that you're going to fail. You become anxious every day you wake up because you don't know what's going to happen. But I'm here to remind you God is working in you. I'm here to remind you God is working in you. And I'm coming into it. God is not only working in you, but also is working on you and working through you to bring you to that place that he has ordained for you. And maybe you're watching me online as well. And you think God has finished with you. He's not finished with you. He's working with you. Apostle Paul speaking to Ephesians, walk with me. In Ephesians 1.15, this church, the Ephesus church, this church was powerful. It was a loving church. It was a united church. But they lacked one thing. Their spiritual understanding. They didn't catch what God was doing in that season. Therefore, Apostle Paul is speaking to them and saying, I've heard of you. Watch this. I've heard of your faith in the Lord. Jesus and your love for all the saints. They had faith and they had love for all the saints. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is Apostle Paul. Then verse number 17, he said, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, what church, the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom, like a sinner, and is knowing what to do at a certain moment. And revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation reveals. Revelation. The eyes are open now. In the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory. Watch this. Of his inheritance in the saints. Then verse number 19 the Bible says. Give it to me please. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. Who believe. According. 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 To the working of his mighty power. Give me verse number 20. Then he continues to say which he worked in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. And seated him at the right hand of the heavenly father. In other words they were not walking in the understanding of what Jesus had already done. Then verse number 21. Walk with me please. Then far above all principalities and powers. 
and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in that which is to come. Therefore, he is talking about the finished work of Jesus. Finished work of Jesus. Therefore, he was not understanding. Walk with me, please. He was not understanding. He was not, they were not understanding what Jesus had done. Ephesians, please, verse number 21. Therefore, they were not understanding what Christ had done. And Pastor Paul is preaching and saying, Jesus, he's seated far above principalities and powers and dominion and everything named. He's seated on top of it. Therefore, this church was a loving church. This church was a powerful church. But their spiritual eyes were not opened to understand what Jesus had done. Their spiritual eyes were not opened to understand what Jesus had done. Therefore, this morning, I came to let you know that God is working in your life. It's never too late. It's never too late in God. God is working and he wants you to bring into it. And I want to say to you this morning, you're fearfully and wonderfully made in Christ. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's never too late for God. David speaking in Psalms 139, verse number 14. He said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your work and my soul knows it well. Therefore, you are exactly how God wanted you to be. You are exactly where God wants you to be to fulfill a certain mandate. And like I said, God is also working on you. Therefore, there are certain things that have to fall off in this season. There are certain things that have to fall off. There are certain things that you, we have to cut off. Because God is not only working in you, but he's only working on you and through you in this season. Therefore, I pray that you will know about what God wants to do with your life because of certain areas that you're not willing to give up. And maybe also you're watching me and there are areas you know definitely they are pulling you back. And God is saying for you to get into this season, into the next season of your life, it's time to prune, it's time to stay away, walk away from those things because God wants to do something great with your life. The Bible says in Philippians 2.13, I feel God in here. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Therefore, God is working in you. God is working in you. Therefore, these are the times, church, to draw closer to God like never before. These are the times to spend time with God like never before. These are the times to study the scriptures like never before. Because if, you, if your spiritual inclination is there, you understand we are coming to the end times. The end times are so near. And we need to prepare ourselves for the second coming. Of Jesus. God is calling us to this dimension of drawing ourselves back to Him. The Bible says in James 4 8, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Why? Because He's a loving Father. He's a loving Father. He doesn't judge you, He doesn't look at you through the lenses of your weaknesses. He doesn't look at you through the lenses of your failures. He doesn't look at you through the lenses of your past. God is looking at you through the lenses of His love because He's the loving. He's a loving, loving father. He's a loving father. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31, 3, the Lord has appeared of old to me saying, watch this, yes, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Walk with me, next verse. With loving kindness, I have drawn you, the Bible says. Therefore, with loving kindness, he has drawn you. Thank you. Therefore, we need to understand, like I said, even as the body of Christ, what God is doing. And like I said last Sunday, God is separating the, 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 the wheat from the chaff. As a body of Christ in the Christian home, this is a clarion call for the body of Christ. God is separating the chaff, the wheat from the chaff. What does that mean? Time for playing, playing games is over. It's time to be serious with God like never before. Because Jesus, like I said, he's preparing his bride for his second coming. Therefore, no games anymore. We have to be ready, ready for his coming. And that's why we need to stay away and walk away from anything that doesn't look like God. In the Bible says in Matthew 24, the disciples were asking him, what are the signs of your second coming? What are going to be the signs, Lord, of your second coming? And all these things, I'm sorry to say, we are seeing them today. All these things in Matthew 24, we are seeing them today. Therefore, the second coming of the Lord is very near. And we need to prepare ourselves for it. 
The Bible says in Matthew 24, 3, I'm going to read all of it. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us where will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end age, verse number 4, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Verse number 5. Walk with me, please. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Verse number 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Verse number 7, please. For nations will rise against nations. You have seen this happening. Kingdom against kingdoms. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And verse number 8, please. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Walk with me. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Verse number 10. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. This is happening today. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And that's why you need to sit under the right doctrine. You need to be taught right. Because right teaching produces right living. And produces right believing. Then verse number 12 the Bible says. And because, and, and because lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. This is happening today. Verse number 13 please. But he who endures till the end shall be saved. Verse number 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end, the end will come. If there's anything I want to take away from this service, live for God. Reverence God. Let walk in the fear for God. May the fear for God encamp your life because we are living in a times where there is no middle ground anymore. We're living in a time where you're either in or out. There is apostasy. Apostasy is when people voluntarily, voluntarily church and willingly reject Christ. We're living in a time where people are worshipping the devil in public. People are not shying away anymore. They are confident when they come out to worship the devil. And that's what I'm saying to you, church. If anything, these are the time to be serious with God. Like never before. Like never before. Morning, rise up and pray. Rise up and pray. Let your prayer life be solid. Let your walk with God be solid. Because we are living in a time where any moment from now, any moment from now, the trumpet is going to sound. And Jesus is going to appear in the clouds. The question is, are you ready for his second coming? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse number 16, for the Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will arise first. Verse number 17. Then we who are alive, and I pray this is going to be me. We who are alive, watch this. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for his second coming? Are you ready for him? Because Jesus is saying, soon and very soon, the Bible says, we don't know the hour or the minute or the day. He will come in like a thief. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for him? Are you ready for him? Are you preparing? Are you living your life every day, preparing yourself for his second coming? And God is saying to us, it's time for you to draw to me like never before. It's time for you to walk with me like never before. It's not time for games anymore. These are the times we are living in. We're living in the times where you cannot have a middle ground. You're either in or out. And last Sunday I said, and I said, Apostle John speaking in the Isle of Patmos. He said to the churches in Asia, that there's no middle ground for you guys. You're neither old or cold because if you are lukewarm, he will spit you out of his mouth. Therefore, these are the times we need to be solid. Solid with God like never before. I feel God in here. Solid with God like never before. No playing games. God is preparing his bride 
for his second coming. The question is, maybe you're watching me. Are you ready? Are you ready for his second coming? Or are you living your life without the consciousness of knowing about his second coming? Therefore, last Sunday, I shared a powerful message. I've been watching it. I've been watching it on understanding times and seasons. And I said last Sunday, one of the things we need to do, we need to look ahead. We need to look ahead, church, because we cannot look back anymore. We have to be resolute, focused, like never before. Then the second thing I said is we need to keep going. We need to keep going no matter what. No matter what you come or you go through, we need to keep pushing on and we need to keep going. Then I said we need to develop and cultivate a genuine walk with God. Genuine walk with God. Why? Because we are coming into a time and we've come into it. Time of manifestation. It's time for manifestation. Time for exploits. They that know their God shall do exploits. It's time for manifestation. Give it to me. It's time for manifestation. We've come into it. What is to manifest? It is to show. It is to exhibit. It is to demonstrate. The reason why I'm saying this is because we're living in a time where there needs to be a difference. There needs to be a demarcation. There needs to be a distinction between the ones who are serving God and the ones who are not. Because the same anointing that is working in here today, it is the same anointing that is going to work in your business. It is the same anointing that is going to work in your job. It is the same anointing that is going to work in your project. So therefore the anointing is going to flow from the pulpit to the pew because you've come to the time of manifestation to exhibit, demonstrate the power of God. And last week I shared about Smith Wigglesworth. Even Robert, John Wesley, Alexander Dowie. These guys, they did powerful things in the kingdom of God. And we are, we are the Smith we go to work of today. And today we're going to demonstrate the power of God. In that job, in that company, there shall be a demarcation. There shall be a distinction. There shall be a difference. You and the rest, why? Because the power of God is working in you. Is working in him. The Bible says in Romans 8 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the true sons of God. Therefore, in this time around, we are riding on grace, we are riding on favor, we are riding on the power of God, we are riding on it because we are coming into it. Favor will open doors for you that money cannot open for you. Grace will bring you to places where connection cannot bring you. Grace will do that for you. Because today now, we've entered into a season of exploits. We've entered into a season of manifestation of demonstration. The power of God that is resident within our spirit. And I would like to encourage you to walk in that consciousness of knowing we've entered into that season of manifesting the power of God that is resident in our spirit. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, in the New King James Version, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good and healing, healing what this church, everyone who was oppressed. Therefore, healing means to mend, to cure, to repair, to make whole. Therefore, today I want to speak in the atmosphere. I speak healing in your body, healing in your emotions, healing in your marriage, healing in your career, healing in your relationship in the name of Jesus, healing in your finances, healing in your mental health in the mighty name of Jesus. Church, there is a divine urgency for spiritual inclination this morning. Your spiritual senses are coming alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, in this season, we shall console God first in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 5, 15, the Bible says, see then that you walk circumspectively. That means extra careful, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not, be wise, do not be unwise, but understand. Do not be unwise, but understand, watch this, what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, 
but be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we need to walk extra careful in this season of manifestation. We need to know what God is doing. And our spiritual senses, they need to come alive. Spiritual senses, they need to come alive. Because like I said, there's a divine urgency for us to arise in the realm of the Spirit. That's my first point for today. In this season of manifestation, one of the things we need to do, we need to raise, raise your expectation. Raise your expectation as a church, as an individual, as a businessman, as an employee, as a student. Raise your expectation. Expect the unexpected. Expect uncommon, uncommon, uncommon miracles to happen in your life. Why? Because expectation is the ground for manifestation. Expectation is a ground for manifestation. Therefore, God is saying to us today, church, we need to raise our expectation. Therefore, my question to you is this. What is your expectation this morning? And this changes the way actually we approach even church. When you come to church, come with an expectation that there's going to be a divine, inter divine transaction happening in your life. Come with an expectation to be encouraged. Come with an expectation to be lifted. Come with an expectation to be nourished in your spirit. Therefore, we don't approach church casually now because we understand we're in a season of manifestation. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 18, for surely there's an end and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Your expectation shall not be cut off. Therefore, when I decree and declare, this is your season. Whatever you believe in God for, you shall come into it in the name of Jesus. In this season, we decree and declare, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper according to Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, Thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Therefore, this is our expectation, church, that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. This now becomes our reality. It becomes our reality. The second thing is that we need to raise the expectation that we are the head and not the tail. According to Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. In this season, God is your strength. According to Psalms 18, 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In this season, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 37, the Bible says, Yet in all things, you are more than conqueror. Through him who loved us. Therefore, in this season, church, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us, according to Philippians 4, 13. This is our reality, church. In this season of manifestation, this is our reality. The Lord is going to be our strength. We're going to be able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In this season of manifestation, we shall not fear. We shall not fear because the Bible says in Psalms 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Therefore, this morning, I want to encourage you. Raise your expectation. Raise your expectation because your expectation is the ground for manifestation. One question Jesus always asked people when he came to heal them. The question he was asking them is, do you want to be made well? In other, in other words, are you expecting me to bring healing in your life? The man at, at the well at Bethsaida in John 5, verse number 6, Jesus saw him. This is the man who was by the pool for 38 years. Nobody was putting him in. He was waiting for somebody to put him in. Then Jesus saw him lying there and he knew that he already had been in that condition for a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made 
well. Therefore, my question to you again, what do you expect from the Lord this morning? What do you expect? What is your expectation from this service? The centurion in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 5, he came to Jesus and told Jesus, you know what, my servant is sick. He's lying there. Then verse number 6, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? Then watch in verse number 8 what he said. Walk with me, please. The centurion replied in verse number 8, Lord, I do not deserve, in verse number 8, Lord, I do not deserve to have you under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Therefore, the centurion was expecting at Jesus' word, at his word, that the servant is going to be healed. He knew that if Jesus speaks his word, it doesn't matter the condition. My servant is going to be made well because his expectation was in that level. Therefore, today I want to encourage us today. Raise your expectation. A woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter number 9, verse 21. He said to herself, if only, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. Therefore, today I want to ask you, maybe you're watching me today. What do you expect from the Lord? What do you expect from the Lord? Because guess what? There's nothing too difficult for God. Nothing too difficult for God. Jeremiah 32, 17, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says, Sovereign Lord, you made the earth and the sky by your great power and might. Nothing is too hard for you. Therefore, whatever the situation is, it's not bigger than God. It is not bigger than God. Therefore, today, even as I come to the end of this service, in our season of manifestation, I want to encourage us today, raise your expectation. Because God is able to do it for you. And maybe you're watching me online today. And maybe you've given up. You've thrown in the towel. You've waited and waited and waited and nothing is happening. And today, you've come to a place where you've not only given up on yourself, but also you've given up on God. God is saying to you this morning, raise your expectation. Because there's nothing, nothing is too difficult for God. Raise your expectation. God is able to do it for you. God is able to bring it to pass. There's nothing, nothing too hard for our God. Raise your expectation. He's going to do it for you. We're in a season of manifestation. There's going to be power of God. And maybe you are there actually and you're not born again. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. Just repeat this prayer after me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I receive the gift of salvation. From today, I receive the gift of forgiveness. And from this hour going forward, I am a born again Christian. If that was you, I want to encourage you to write to us. There are details at the bottom of your screen right now. Speak to us. Tell us what God has done in your life. Because one of the greatest miracles that can ever happen in your life it is to give your life for Jesus. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. Therefore, this newness is the life and the nature of God in you. Therefore, when you come to Jesus, your expectation changes and you raise your expectation to the level that you want him to work in your life. If that was you, write to us and God is going to bless you. I want to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, I pray for that person right now. I decree and declare in Jesus' name that, Father, from this day going forward, they are born again Christian and their lives will never be the same again. You are there, you are sick in your body. I speak the healing power of God right now. As you're watching this video right now, I speak the power, I send healing, healing power of God. 
in your life in Jesus' name. You are there, there's chains, there's chains, chains. You're tired with so many addictions that you can't live without. You become a slave to those addictions. Right now, I break those chains because there's power in the name of Jesus. I break those chains right now. And from this day going forward, you're a new creation. You shall enjoy your peace. You shall enjoy your liberty in Christ in the name of Jesus. I bless you today with the blessing of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're in the service today, I want us to bow down our head for a moment. Father, we honor you today. We give you glory. We give you all adoration, oh God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what you're doing in this place, oh God. Oh, Father, we honor you. We give you all the glory. We choose to raise our expectation, oh God. We raise our expectation. We raise our expectation to what you want to do with our lives, oh God. We are not failures, oh God. Everlasting Father, we speak and declare it's our season. It's our time, oh God. Even as a church, oh God, as a church, we've come into that season of manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all of the honor, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are mighty. You are everlasting, God. You are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we love you, Jesus, and we honor you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in this house, oh God. We surrender ourselves to you. We're not going to leave this place the same way. We raise our expectation right now. We raise our expectation in the name of Jesus. We raise our expectation in the name of Jesus. And we speak and declare it's our time, it's our season in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all of the honor. We give you all of magnity in the name that is above every other name. We love you, Jesus. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. You've got to keep going. You walk with God. My third point is that 